science. We get experimental get science. We're curious, non judgmental. Let's see if we can highlight the abdomen. It's got really nice tergite structures, so those are what allow it, the abdomen to expand. These structures right here, there we go. You can see right there, those little jagged pieces are like pieces of armor that fit together and allow the abdomen to expand and contract. This is especially important in the females. Their reproductive ability is tied to that ability to have the abdomen expand and contract. If they can't do that, their ovaries can't react to environmental changes. So it's important for them to have that ability, which is manifested by the interlocking plates, which again, I think looks really, really cool. And it's a great looking image. A lot of insects have this. Our ants have it, our fruit flies have it, our bees have it. Again, if they're well eaten, they can make more and more. So they don't have a set number of eggs like humans do. They have what are called stem cells that divide asymmetrically, meaning that when you have a stem cell divide, one division stays a stem cell, the other cell becomes an egg. That's why queens of, of ants can live 30 years, three zero, right? If they had a set number of eggs, they'd probably be done after 100, let's say. But some ant queens can lay a thousand eggs a day. You can actually analyze uh, the developing embryos. You can count how many there are just by looking underneath the microscope. Uh, you stain them with a vital dye called DAPI. That marks um, DNA. And then you can actually look at the DNA structure and decide what stage each embryo is in. So you can take images like this. This is a, a fruit fly ovary. That green is your DNA. This circle here, and this, and this, and then these smaller ones. You see how they're separated by that purple when you get lower? Each of those is an egg. This is an embryo. This is an embryo. You see how they're getting smaller and smaller? Back up here are the stem cells, and then you just are moving along a conveyor belt. And that conveyor belt, see how it's getting bigger and bigger, and then it's this size, and then it's this size. So this is the biggest, that's a stage 14. Notice on the outside layer of this, there's a bunch of tiny cells. Those are called follicle cells. Those are giving information to the inside developing ovary. These, bigger circles here are called nurse cells and this is the oocyte what ends up happening is that these nurse cells they so sparky they produce a ton of protein and rna and then dump all of it into the oocyte to allow the oocyte to continue developing which one becomes the oocyte that's it's just at random so there's a bunch of nurse cells and oocytes and one of them becomes the oocyte but they start off as all nurse cells here where you can't you can't see the nurse cells anymore and it's much larger that's the final stage and then these tracks here are the oviduct down to here and this is where the egg is laid if you zoom in on this image do you see now that the dna looks a little bit different uh, especially comparing these two it's so like here it was nice circles and then this next cell you see how they're kind of pushed together and then you move over one another cell and they're just circles they're just dots now that is apoptosis so that's programmed cell death happening so what happens in this image is that at a particular stage the eggs are being killed and it's because there's a food deprivation on this so then this study here they the mccall lab that you starve the fruit flies it lowers uh, insulin signaling and it causes two particular stages to undergo cell death we said that there's 14 stages of embryos stage seven and eight and stage two and three undergo apoptosis or cell death that lowers the number of eggs within the ovary and then they'll turn back on they'll turn back on once the animal gets more food and the way you can visualize that is these dots so you can do that same dna stain and if those those punctate dots form then that's too much and that's why you end up having the cells like that's how you can visualize that cell death which i think is quite remarkable it always ovaries and the oogenesis of these animals always blows me away